Hello dear learners, welcome back to our channel. I am Dr. Vandana Yadav, Department of Chemistry, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences and today we are going to discuss ionic equilibria in aqueous system. In this lecture, we are going to focus on buffer solution, types of buffer solutions, buffers and their common ion effect, mechanism of buffer action, Henderson equation, buffer effectiveness and buffering range along with buffering capacity. Starting with what are buffers? Buffers are the solution which tends to resist any change in its pH when you are adding a very small amount of either a strong acid or a strong base. So, what we can say that pH practically remains constant. Moving on to types of buffer solution. Buffer solution can be solution of a single substance in that solution of salt of weak acid along with a weak base. We can have solution of mixture, they are categorized as acidic buffer and basic buffer. We are going to discuss acidic buffer and basic buffers in detail. So, moving on to acid base buffers. So, as I told you that acid base buffer is a solution that lessens or you can say impact of pH from addition of acids or bases whatever amount of acid or base you add in the buffer solution, there will be practically no change in its pH. So, we can say that acid base buffer consists of what? Consists of pair of conjugate acids and bases. Conjugate acid base pair we have already discussed in theories of acids and bases. So, acid base buffer therefore, we can conclude is a solution of weak acid like acetic acid and its conjugate base and if it is a basic buffer then it consists of a weak base along with its conjugate acid. So, let us see how we can pre prepare our acidic buffer solution. So, as you can see that we have weak acid that is acetic acid. CH3 COOH and we have sodium acetate its conjugate base. So, when we are mixing these two, we are preparing acidic buffer solution. So, from the diagram it is clear that this is the acidic buffer solution and these are the position of ions in the acidic buffer solution. Moving on to basic buffer solution. So, you can see that basic buffer solution consists of weak base like ammonia as you can see in the picture and it consists of its conjugate acid like NH4Cl. So, if you mix them in equivalent quantity, you are preparing basic buffer solution. I think you all must have a clear picture about how we can prepare the buffer solution. Now, moving on to buffers and common ion effect. So, common ion, we have already discussed this in theories of acids and bases, but here also we are going to relate buffers and common ion effect. So, basically you can say that buffer works through common ion effect. So, before moving on to exactly what is common ion effect, we have acetic acid, a weak acid which is a very important component in acid, acidic buffer. So, it weakly ionizes in water to give you acetate ion and H3O positive. Now, if as you can see from the arrow, if I am adding sodium acetate on the right hand side, it provides a source for production of acetate ion and equilibrium will shift towards the left hand side. So, therefore, addition of acetate ion will reduce dissociation of acetic acid. Why? Because acetic acid is also producing acetate ion and sodium acetate as you can see 
sodium acetate is also going to produce acetate ion. Acetate ion is acting as a common ion. So, with this there will be reduction in the dissociation of acetic acid. This is how the buffer solution works. I will explain this mechanism in detail. Moving on to next slide, you can see that mechanism of acidic or you can say basic buffer will be you have acetic acid as I have shown you earlier and it dissociates weakly to give acetate ion and H3O positive. So, you can see on my right hand side or you can see right hand side of the equation if I am adding H3O positive they react with acetate ion and causing the shift towards the left hand side that is shift towards the reactant side while if I am adding OH they reacts with acetic acid and causing the shift towards the product side. So, this shift in equilibrium when I am adding H3O positive towards left hand side or when I am adding OH negative the shifts to right hand side this shift in equilibrium due to H3O positive or OH positive there is no change in the pH and these are called as buffer solution. So, you can see that due to the production of ions the equilibrium is shifting and there is practically no change in the pH. This will be more clear with this diagram. You can see in the center I have buffer solution with equal concentration of acetate ion and acetic acid. Now, if we move towards the right hand side of the equation you can see that if I am adding OH negative they are producing more amount of acetate ion. However, if I am adding H3O positive you can see that the quantity or you can say the proportion of acetate ion and acetic acid is slightly variating. So, buffer has more amount of HA acetic acid on adding H3O positive as it is clear from left hand side and buffer has more amount of A negative after adding OH negative. So, this is how a buffer or basically acidic buffer works. Now, I think you must be clear with the mechanism of buffers. Moving on to next part, we have Henderson equation through which we can calculate the pH of any buffer solution. So, if you are having acid or acidic buffer, the equation is pH is equal to pKa log salt upon acid. So, with this equation, this is called Henderson equation and this is applicable in case of acidic buffers. So, as clear you have acid water which dissociates to give you A negative and H positive applying the equation you get Henderson equation. Similarly, we can have equation for basic buffer also. So, for basic buffer it is POH PKB plus log salt upon base. So, finally, we can say that pH plus POH is equal to 14. So, knowing the value of pH we can calculate POH or knowing the value of POH we can easily calculate pH. Now, buffer effectiveness though we are having buffer solution and you all must have used buffer solution in various reactions like for uh, when we are determining the hardness of water using EDTA we use a buffer solution to maintain a pH of 10. So, we need to know the effectiveness of any buffer solution. So, a good buffer is the one which can neutralize moderate amount of added acid or base means if you are adding it in a small quantity it should neutralize the effect of adding acids or a base. But there is a certain limit also how much we can add it add 
before the change of pH is significant. So, buffering capacity is basically you can say the amount of acid or bases a buffer can neutralize and there is a range in which pH buffer will be effective. So, two things you have to remember that effectiveness depends on two factor. First thing, what is the relative amount of acids and bases and second is the concentration. These two factors directly affect the working of your buffer solution. So, we need to understand the relative amount of acids and base and their concentration. So, moving on to this, a buffer will be most effective when you have a ratio of 1, base is to acid 1, that is equal concentration of acids and bases, that will be most effective buffer solution, but it will be effective when you have this relation of base as well as acid. But we need to understand or we need to have a definite conclusion regarding what will be the case or what will be the effect when you are having a smaller pH or you are having a larger pH. This can be understood using Henderson equation. So, moving on to Anderson equation, if you want to calculate or if you want to exactly understand the buffering range, as I told you in the previous slide that we have a effective range of bases to acid, applying this or substituting this into the Henderson equation, we can calculate the maximum and minimum pH at which this buffer will be effective. So, at my left hand side you can see lowest pH and at my right hand side you can see the highest pH. So, from this we can conclude that the effective pH range of buffer is plus minus 1. So, while choosing an acid to prepare a buffer solution, you should choose the one with pKa closest to the pH of the buffer. So, closest to the pH of buffer, if you will remember this point while preparing buffer solution, then you will be having an effective buffer solution. Moving on to your buffering capacity. So, as I told you buffering capacity is basically what? Buffering capacity is the moles or grams equivalent of acids or a base that are required for change in pH of solution by unity or you can say by 1. So, it basically depends on what? It basically depends on the concentration of the solution and buffering capacity is a quantitative measure of the resistance of pH change when ions are being added into buffer. As we have seen in the case of acetic acid, this is COH plus water as I have already already shown you this equation. Okay. So, it is the quantitative measure of resistance of pH change when ions are added in the buffer solution. So, this is one step for preparing uh, buffer solution. You can take second one and you can have a common ion. So, then you will be able to calculate buffering capacity. So, today we discussed buffer solution, acidic buffer, basic buffer, their mechanism, Henderson equation and buffering capacity. This is all from my side in this lecture. In our next lecture, we are going to discuss Henderson equation in detail.